Because think about that. It's not going anywhere with 5 volts. And then it's already at a high potential. And all you do is when you give it a logic zero, you're pulling the plug out, and that current can start rushing down to ground. Okay? So, um, so what would you think? Uh, a common anode seven-segment display needs for a single segment to light up. Well, it would probably require an active low, i.e. a zero volt. So that's why your head did all that exploding earlier. There's active lows. That's why a lot of decoders use active lows. In this case, this decoder that goes along with a seven-segment display is going to produce an active low for each one of the segments. So there's a system application activity in your book as you derive uh, some products expression for each and every segment, for each and every number or letter, I can't remember, but there's a way easier to do, way to do this. And that is the 7447 seven segment decoder. Okay, so what is the 7447 seven segment decoder? Well, it's going to give you active lows on your, uh, your outputs there. So rather than doing a, uh, the sum of products expression um, for every single one of the numbers there and for every single one of the segments, like that system application in your book does, all that logic for all the numbers and letters is already built in this guy right here. So how do you use it? Oh, simple block diagram right here is your basic logic is coming in. Is that logic coming in? Basic in. Basic. Here's A0, A3, A2, A1. That is your BCD coming in. I should keep in mind that is a BCD to seven segment. It's not binary. It's 1010. So when it says 1010, it's not going to just suddenly make uh, a bunch of different segments. It's only seven segments. It can only display a single digit. It's not going to suddenly cram in a one and a zero. No, it's not going to do that. OK. If it gave it a 1010, it would give you an A. But we'll get back into that. OK. So um, it has these outs right here. How many outs do you think there would be for a seven segment decoder? Well, there's seven, seven active lows, and it goes from A to G. And all you do is hook that up to your seven segment display. That's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you just hook these guys up to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And now, when you put in, let's just go back to our one that we've been using over and over, 1001, a 9. 1 goes to A0, 0, zero and then a, the last, or excuse me, the MSB, 1 goes to A3. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to have a low output for A, low output for B, low output for C, low output for F, and G, and that's a nine. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so and D2, if you got that little swoopy. I don't remember. Does it do? Is that a nine? Or is that a nine? I don't know. We'll see. We'll put a nine in a lab. I don't know if I don't know if that segment is lit up or not. Um if I look at a digital clock, uh, unfortunately it's not. It's not anything with a nine in it. Okay, um, that's the basic ins and outs of the 7447. There is a couple other special things for the 7447. First one is a BI, not BI, blanking input. I have learned something new. I have always called this the blanking indicator, and I have no idea why or where I ever got that term. But it's actually called the blanking input. And actually, that actually makes a lot more sense. Blanking input, all it is was when the blanking input, when uh, it just blanks the thing out, when, uh, when BI is low, when not BI is low, 
uh, all outputs are high. So it blanks the screen out. That's all it does. I never, I never knew where I came up with indicator from. Okay. Um, there are, what's the other one in there? Oh, lamp test, test all the lamps. That's uh, LT. And then there is RBO and RBI. Not RBO, not RBI. That is the ripple blanking output, ripple blanking input. These guys used in combination um, are for zero suppression. Now what zero suppression is and why it's important is imagine a, a digital scale um, with, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four digits to the left of the decimal place, four digits to the right of the decimal place. So now you put an object on it and it happens to weigh seven. Actually, let's go back to the green. So it looks seven, uh, seven. 0.4 oh six kilograms. So what zero suppression is doing, it's getting rid of all those leading zeros and get it rid of all the trailing zeros. Trailing and leading. Because otherwise you'd have zero, zero, zero. I know I didn't do the digital for that. I'll do it for this one. Otherwise, you'd have that. That's without zero, um, zero suppression. But you're like, hey, wait a second. What about this guy? Well, that's an essential zero. It's essential to this number because there's another number after it. That zero is important. So basically, what zero suppression is doing is just taking away the leading zeros when there's no other number before them, and it's taking away the leading, excuse me, the trailing zeros with no other number after them. And how you do that is you're going to hook up your RBO and RBIs um, between each one of these four displays. There's a little bit of a talk in between them. And it's actually pretty complicated once you get to the, uh, the trailing zeros. Okay, so pay special attention to the 7447 because we are going to use this guy a lot and we're going to use this seventh segment display with a common anode. Okay, this completes the section on decoders. We're going to talk about encoders later.